Claude finally got a brand new upgrade. They just released Claude 3.7 Sonnet. This is an upgrade from 3.5 Sonnet. And if you've used Claude before, it's one of my go-to large language models, especially because of its tone and some functionality that they have. This is from a company called Anthropic, and they don't do releases very often. In fact, Claude 3.5 Sonnet came out five months ago now in the age of AI, that's a thousand years ago. And they also released something called Claude Code, which I'll show you here. Now you'll notice inside of Claude.ai website, you'll have three different models. So you have Claude 3.7 Sonnet. This is the replacement for 3.5. But then for the thinking mode or the reasoning models, you actually have two different ones. You have a normal one. This is for most use cases. And then you have the extended one. This is best for math and reasoning. So this is just a smarter version that's gonna think longer. I'm gonna use this one for most of the testing here. The normal version, this is why they call this a hybrid reasoning model, is because the normal version is almost instant. It doesn't really show you much thinking. It almost gives you the answer instantly. As you can see here, it just kind of gave me the answer here and it didn't have to show me its thinking. Now, as far as the pricing of this, Claude 3.7 Sonnet is actually available on all Claude accounts, including free pro team and enterprise. It's also available inside the Anthropic API and it shows their pricing here for that. But the extended thinking mode, this is only gonna be available in every tier except the free tier. So if you want the extended one, you will have to upgrade to at least the professional plan for that. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different things. We'll do some standard things with the Claude here, the 3.7 Sonnet, the standard mode. Then I'm gonna show you some reasoning mode. I'll show you some of these benchmarks here that they rolled out too. For example, when it comes to coding here, this is their latest benchmark, comparing it to OpenAI 01, OpenAI 03 Mini High, and DeepSeq R1. And obviously with benchmarks, nowadays I like to test it out for myself. But as you can see here in software engineering, it's beating all of those in this benchmark. And this is the most standard test that you've probably seen before if you've seen any of these benchmarks. Again, it's comparable to some of the top models. They include DeepSeq R1 and Grok 3, which recently rolled out here too. And they also introduced Claude Code. Now this one is only available in Research Preview right now, so you may not have it yet. But because Claude Sonnet, 3.5 Sonnet, was one of the best tools for coding, they decided to create something that was more native to coders, and that is our first agentic coding tool. So this is kind of built in to some of those platforms, and you'll have GitHub access here right inside of Claude to work with code natively using Claude 3.7 Sonnet. So this video does a really good job explaining it in about four minutes. So I'll link this page in the description if you wanna learn more about that. Right now, I wanna show you Claude 3.7 Sonnet right inside of the Cloud website. Okay, we'll go ahead and put Claude through some basic testing here. One of my favorite reasons and why I still have a paid subscription to Claude is because of its writing style. And then in addition to that, they have this choose style option where you could define your own writing style with a better set of instruction that it uses on the back end here. Every time you go to write something, it's gonna use one of these styles and one of them I've created here. But some of these other ones that are here by default are really good. But the normal writing style, basically not choosing any style, I think with Claude 3.5 Sonnet was one of the best. Now we have Claude 3.7 Sonnet, so let's see what we get there. So I'm not gonna give it too much instructions. I'm just gonna ask for a summary in 250 words and I'm gonna ask it to include the key points in five bullet points. And I'm just gonna copy this entire page here. Now here's our summary. Anthropic has announced Claw 3.7 Sonnet, their most intelligent model to date, and their first hybrid reasoning model. The new model can provide either quick answers or extended step-by-step -step thinking that users can see. So you could see the thinking, I'll show you when we use the reasoning model. Claw 3.7 Sonnet shows significant improvement in coding and front end web development capabilities. So we'll test this a little bit here too. But you could see the default writing is so much better if you've ever used ChatGPT or even Gemini. They go overly promotional still to this day. They do improve that all the time, but I still prefer Claude with his default writing style here without really doing anything to the style or the tone. And he actually listened to our prompt here. So we got exactly five bullet points over here. And I copied and pasted this section to count the words. And we got exactly 248 words out of this one, which is really impressive. Usually these models don't do a good job with word count. That's not really how they work. 
they work off token counting and not word counting, but really great job here. Okay, now one limitation I'll point out right up front, which has been the limitation that Claude has had for a long time. One of the reasons people use other models, it doesn't have web access. So if I give it a question here that requires real time, it's gonna say, my knowledge cutoff is October, 2024. Now ChatGPT has web access, Grok, DeepSeek, Gemini, they all have web access. This one still doesn't have web access. And all those also have something called deep research where it analyzes a ton of websites and gives you a much more in-depth summary of what you're looking up. This doesn't have that either, right? So this is gonna be a problem if this is what you're looking to do with it. Now, the next test I wanna do is a hallucination test because if you use these type of large language models, you know that they make stuff up sometimes. And that is one of their biggest limitation. So describe each of the following variety of mangoes and I just named four. One of them is not actually accurate. Let's see if you could figure that out. Okay, totally failed this test. This lemon cream mango, I just made that up. Lemon cream mangoes are a lesser known but delightful variety. Nope, I just made that up. They're not a delightful variety. I'm just curious if ChatGPT does get this one right. I haven't tested it for a while. Okay, ChatGPT got it wrong too. It just told me this is a rare variety of mango. And sometimes having web search kind of helps a little bit with these kind of hallucination problems. Perplexity, for example, told me there is no specific information on lemon cream variety, but there is something called lemon zest mango here. So I could follow up on that and just kind of do my research to make sure this one is also not made up. So this is something that you could solve to some extent with search where Claude and ChatGPT failed at. Okay, next, let's do a coding test. And I'm gonna turn on this extended mode this time because this is designed for math and coding. So I'm gonna have a math question coming up too. And we're gonna ask it to code a game of chess. And I'm just gonna make it a basic game right now. And then I'll change the rules of the game here if you could do this without problem. Before, in my previous videos, I checked with O3, uh, O3 mini, I checked with DeepSeek R1, same kind of prompt, and I was able to get the results. So then I changed the rules of the game to make it really complicated for them. And to some extent, they were able to get it right in those other videos. I'm gonna tell it the pieces are saved in a folder called assets on my computer, and I'm gonna upload an image of that. Okay, for the very first one, for some reason, it decided to do this in web kind of language in HTML, and this is the game I got. So I downloaded it and I tried to run this game, and it kind of looked nice. The images did not load, so it wasn't able to connect those, but I also couldn't play at all. So that, was a fail. So I asked it to make this in Python instead, something that I've been using with all the other tests. Now in its first attempt, it wrote the Python code. I was able to run it, but the moment I tried to move a piece, it crashed the game. So that also didn't work. And it took me five times to go back and forth to get a working chess game that I'll show you here. Okay, and here's the game. By the way, I didn't tell it to make a game of chess where the rules were different. I'm just trying to get a default chess game and it's not working the right way. You could see already this piece should move two and it could only move one. Same thing with the opponent. So for some reason, he got the basic rules of a game of chess wrong. I literally can't move this one the right way. He also couldn't figure out when the game was done. So if I took this piece here, it just kind of kept going. Even though I should be able to take this right now, it shouldn't be able to move another piece right now, but I could just keep kind of moving my other pieces. And this is just happening over here. And I think if I take, yeah. So it just kind of doesn't know how the game ends either. But the fact that the pawns just couldn't move the right way was a big fail because the other models that I've used, not only did they get a default game of chess correct off of one prompt usually, sometimes on the second prompt, after six or seven prompts, I still don't have a functioning game of chess and I haven't even changed the rules yet. Typically for these tests, I push them further. I ask, hey, can the king move like the queen to really try to get some new rules in there? But I didn't really need to do that because I just couldn't even get this to work. And you can see the UI here is kind of a little messed up too. So on top here is cutting off some of these with this text. Now in the release, they said it's really good at front end. So I have this issue with my website where it's not doing a good job with formatting this for the web. So I'm gonna just take a picture on top of this. So if I shrink this down, you could see it's not center aligned right here. So I'm trying to change that right now. 
and I'm gonna ask it to improve that. So let's give it that image. So I'm just gonna ask it to write front end code all in one file and try to fix the issue here for mobile. So let's see what we get here. It's gonna give us the code and I'll run this in a second. Okay, this is what I got on desktop view from that. And if I shrink it down, okay, it's centered align some things, but uh, the formatting is not great. So it really optimized it for mobile and completely messed it up on desktop view. So that did not quite work. I'm sure with some back and forth, I could get it, but I've been using Claude 3.5 Sana for these kind of things. And with some back and forth, I could get it to work too, eventually. Sometimes I run out of credits. That's one of the other things with Claude that I've had issues with. You hit your limit all the time. If you use it, I'm sure you've hit that same issue before too. Okay, so far, still the same points that I gave 3.5 Sonnet. I think it's still great at its tone, in summary, listening to my instructions. But two coding tests now, even a basic front-end code where it takes an image and makes it kind of an HTML page, not great. Let's do a reasoning test here that I've done with other models too. Okay, this one I've tested with every model in previous videos, every reasoning model. So I'm gonna choose, make sure it's set to the extended reasoning model here. And it says you have a rope exactly 50 feet, building is 75 feet. You need to measure that using only the rope and your body, which is only five feet tall. Describe your steps. So I'll show you the reasoning how it actually goes through it too. Because one thing I do like about it is if you click over here, you could see the actual reasoning here. And I didn't see that being a summary of its reasoning. They kind of said it is showing you the step-by-step -step reasoning. It's also showing you the timer up here, 16 seconds so far. So I'll let this finish up. Okay, one minute and 39 seconds this time. And I ran this three different times and he got it wrong every single time in different ways. This time he got it wrong by saying, just stretch the rope 50 feet vertically along the side of the building from the ground. Well, how are we gonna do that? The, there's gonna be gravity pulling that rope down. We can't just stick it straight up. Then it says, get to 50 feet and then use your five feet body to keep measuring it like you're supposed to float in the air. So this is definitely on par with some of the worst answers I got using any of these models. And I'm pretty sure ChatGPT 03 Mini got this one right. So this is a thinking model, it's a reasoning model. It thought for almost two minutes, which is also on the long end of these reasoning models solving this problem. And similar triangles is the actual solution on how you're supposed to do this. You can't just put the rope up there. So this definitely is a fail. And it fell three different times in completely different ways. One time he just kind of made up an answer that made zero sense. At least this time he just doesn't know that gravity is gonna pull that rope down, but it, like the logic of it kind of makes sense. And when I first tested it initially, I asked it how many R's in strawberry. And instead of just telling me three, it created some app here. Click the strawberry to find out how many R's. One. Oh. Okay, so, so I guess it got three R's, but I don't know why you had to make an interactive app. I guess that's kind of neat. Now I'm gonna keep using this. I still really love Claude for its writing, but some of these early tests here were not very impressive. So let me know what you find out. Go ahead and comment below. I love to see if you're getting better results than I'm getting here in the initial first day release. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.